if you're looking to buy a new SSD and you don't really feel like going through a bunch of individual reviews, uh, this video is for you because uh, we've tested and retested so many different SSDs in the recent months and today I'm going to squish all that data into a list of SSDs that I would personally buy and I would personally recommend. So let's begin. So we had over 100 PCI Express M.2 NVMe SSDs on our test bench so far and most of them were Gen 4 drives as they do fill up the majority of the market. As some Gen 3 SSDs as well because some of them still hold up really well and are still worth considering in some situations. And I also have a nice collection of Gen 5 SSDs as well as several tiny 2230 SSDs for Steam Decks and other small portable devices. Now I'm not going to talk about all of them individually but but I did make a selection of drives that are worth considering and that are available in multiple regions. And I also sorted them in a couple of categories uh, to make it easy to figure out uh, which one would fit your use case best. And just to make it clear, uh, this video is not sponsored by any SSD manufacturer and all the recommendations you will hear today uh, were only based on my own personal data. I also want to point out that the price will always play a very big part in deciding which SSD to get. And the tricky part about that is that the prices do vary per region quite a bit and they do change all the time. So it is very important to always double check the prices in your region at the time of your purchase and then especially so around holidays and when uh, Black Friday deals show up. So while I will mostly focus on the drives that make the most sense at the moment, uh, please do remember that with the right price, every other SSD that you see in this video can be worth considering just as much. So let's start with the best value drives. Now for this category, I was primarily looking at drives that have a good price, uh, that offer good performance in light use, and have at least a reasonable performance in slightly heavier workloads. Now DRAM cache in this category is not really necessary because it usually makes the drive a cost even more. And as you will see in the graphs, DRAM less drives can perform quite well in light and medium use. So my first recommendation here would be the Kingston NV3 drive. It is usually the cheapest SSD by far in many regions. It performs really well in light use where it keeps up with some of the more expensive drives on the market and even in some heavier benchmarks it still holds up pretty well making it an easy choice for people that just want something very affordable that will still work fine for most day-to-day -day tasks. As an alternative I would like to mention the WD Blue SN580 and the Sam Samsung 990 EVO Plus. So the SN580 is a bit older and slightly behind the NV3 across the board, uh, but it still holds up pretty well and the price is usually quite low. While the 990 EVO Plus is a much newer drive and it is actually the fastest DRM-less drive on the market. But considering the fact it just launched, it is too expensive at the moment to just instantly recommend it over the other two drives, but it is definitely the drive to keep an eye on and grab it when the price is right. But let's check out the best all around slash professional drive that you can currently get. And for this category, I was looking at drives that offer great performance across all benchmarks and that come with proper components and DRAM cache this time around. Drives in this category would be great for um, a bit of a heavier use of the drive, like video editing, for example, or some other uh, storage intensive workloads. Uh, it would be great for workstations or just high-end systems where you're not really bound by a tight budget. And here I was looking at drives that did really well in medium heavy workloads but also that held up really well in the consistency test where you really uh, stress the drive to its limits by writing to it non-stop. And in this category my first go-to drive would still be the Samsung 990 Pro. It performs well in all benchmarks, uh, it has by far the best SSD software package with most consistent firmware updates, it has the most extensive support for encryption and it is generally available in most regions. Now obviously you do need to pay a bit more for a higher end drive like this one, but if you're building a whole high end system, uh, paying a premium for a proper high end SSD is not that bad overall. Now the Crucial T500 would be a very good alternative that also performs really well in most workloads, uh, but it falls a little bit short in those really extreme uh, continuous uh, write scenarios. 
and their software and update package isn't as good as Samsung's. And the other very good alternative would be the SK Hynix P41 because it also does really well across the board and you can often find it for a very good price. But the availability might be an issue because in some regions it might be really hard to find one of these. But let's check out which drive would be the best for gaming. Now here, I was primarily looking at the 3D Mark Storage Benchmark, which is a collection of tests that simulate a lot of different gaming related tasks. And if I then pick out the areas that are most important for gaming, like uh, loading your games, installing your games and updating your games, the crucial T500 SSD has been the fastest Gen 4 option in my testing for a very long time. And since it performs well across the board and it is a great all-around drive as well, it is a very easy recommendation if you need an SSD that you want to use for gaming uh, next to other tasks. Now, Crucial does need to keep an eye on the prices and availability because sometimes you can find a really great deal while at other times it can be quite expensive. As an alternative, I would again look at the uh, SK Hynix P41 Platinum, but also the WD Black SN850X because uh, both of these models keep up really well in games. Uh, both are DRAM based drives and both do really well in other benchmarks as well. The Corsair MP700 Pro SE is technically the fastest SSD when it comes to gaming benchmarks, but it is a Gen 5 drive and it is typically way too expensive for me to recommend it. But if the price ever comes down, uh, this is the drive that is at the top of the chart. Now, if you really want a more affordable gaming SSD, I would look at Lexar NM790, for example, or the Samsung 990 EVO Plus. Now, they both did very well in gaming benchmarks. Uh, they are generally not too expensive, uh, but they do lack DRAM cache. So please do keep that in mind. Now, if you're looking for a gaming SSD for your PlayStation 5, uh, you wanna get a drive that at least meets a Sony's minimum recommended read speed, uh, which a lot of drives do. And ideally, you also want it to have a DRAM cache since PlayStations uh, cannot use host memory buffer that DRAM-less SSDs use for caching. Which means that the same SSDs I just recommended for PC gaming would also be a very good choice for the PlayStation 5. So the Crucial T500, SN850X or the P41 Platinum. Uh, just make sure that you definitely use a heatsink in the PlayStation. So either get a heatsink version of the drive or buy a separate heatsink with the recommended dimensions in mind. Uh, I am going to leave some suggestions in the description box of this video. But let's check out the best Gen 5 SSDs. First of all, I want to make it very clear that for most people, it doesn't make sense to get a Gen 5 SSD. Uh, they're expensive, uh, most of them need some serious cooling, and for most workloads there are no real benefits that you can see just yet. But there are still some use cases where you want the best performance and some people are completely okay with paying a very big premium just to get that. Also, most Gen 5 SSDs are based on the same Fison controller and the same or at least very similar flash memory, which means that in some graphs there are basically no real performance differences between those drives. But we do see a difference in those extremely heavy consistency tests, for example, or when you look at gaming performance. And uh, one SSD that was at the top across all benchmarks is the Corsair MP700 Pro SE. So if you're someone who will really benefit from a Gen 5 drive, or you just really want to have one, uh, this is the drive to go for. The MSI M580 is a close second in terms of performance, but availability is a bit of an issue for MSI drives, which is a shame. Again, I would personally go for a high-end Gen 4 drive instead, but if you really insist on going the Gen 5 route, uh, any of these drives will get you a similar experience. Unfortunately, uh, a lot of SSDs are not available in very large capacities. So if you're looking for an 8 terabyte SSD, the WD Black SN850X is what I would go for. It performs well in medium heavy benchmarks, uh, it does well in gaming, and it holds up fine if you start to stress it a bit more as well. And besides being one of the very few higher end models that is actually available in 4 and 8 terabyte capacities, it is also very often uh, one of the cheapest options as well. 
Now the second option here would be the Lexar NM790 for example. Uh, it is not as fast as the SN850X overall and it doesn't have DRAM cache which makes it cheaper and a very good value option if you really need an 8 terabyte drive. But if you're going for 4 terabyte drives instead, uh, several models I mentioned before are also available in a 4 terabyte capacity too. The WD Blue SN5000, for example, is worth singling out here because uh, it is quickly becoming one of the cheapest 4 terabyte options in both Europe and the US. Uh, it performs really well in the lighter version of the PC Mark 10 benchmark, and it holds up well in medium heavy workloads as well. And finally, I really want to mention a few smaller 2230 SSDs that you would use in a Steam Deck or some similar handheld devices, for example. And Corsair MP600 Mini is the best drive I've tested in this category, assuming you are primarily buying this for gaming devices. It performed great in a 3 d Mark storage benchmark, and specifically so in the gaming benchmarks that I personally find the most important, which is, again, loading times, installing games, and updating games. But it is also great for simple light use or even some heavier use cases as well. Now, Corsair SSDs are usually available in most regions and for a decent price, so uh, this is definitely a very easy recommendation if you're looking to buy a small 2230 SSD. Uh, the Sabrent Rocket 2230 is based on the same hardware as the Corsair, so it is a great alternative. And the performance of the WD SN770M is close enough, so it is also worth considering if you find it for a great price, as well as the SPUD90 that is a little bit further behind in performance, and the availability can vary a bit here and there, but SP products do have some great deals every once in a while, so it is definitely worth keeping an eye out for those discounts. Now, this is all I have for this video. Uh, I'm going to put every category with all the drives I mentioned today in the description box down below uh, with some links. So if you're interested in picking one up, uh, you can easily search for a model in your region. And I will also leave a pinned comment with some Black Friday deals that are interesting at the moment. Uh, just please do remember that prices do change all the time. And this is just a general recommendation. So if you do find a very good deal on any other drive I mentioned today, uh, just go for it. And if you have any doubts, you can always leave a comment down below and I will do my best to answer all of them. This video was brought to you by Seasonic and their Vertex power supplies. These fully modular power supplies are extremely efficient and very quiet due to their fan design and their hybrid fan mode that stops the fans completely under 40% load. They come with a variety of connections for any kind of system you have in mind, including the 12 volt high power cable for the latest NVIDIA graphics cards. And to wrap it all up, they now offer a nice and cozy 12 year long warranty. Check them out using the links in the description below. Thank you all for watching and staying to the end of this video. I really hope it was uh, useful enough. Uh, if you liked it and you want to see more videos like this one, please do consider clicking that subscribe button uh, so you never miss my future uploads. Bye guys and I will see you in the next one. Bye.